Bolters are one of the most iconic weapons in the Warhammer 40k universe. This chunky gun is all hard edges, oiled metal, and has just enough Baroque details to remind you that the Bolter is not just a battle rifle, it's a holy symbol of the Emperor's wrath. Bolters are used as the primary weapon for both the warrior nuns of the Adeptus Sororitas and the warrior monks of the Adeptus Astartes. But you'd be hard pressed to find an Imperial or ex-Imperial army without at least some type of bolt weapon in their loadouts. It's the brick that forms the very foundation of mankind's galaxy-spanning empire. So get the sacred oils ready and pay attention while we tell you all about the Bolter. To say that the Bolter is a battle rifle is a little misleading. The standard infantry bolt gun fires a self-propelled, depleted deuterium 75 caliber shell. It's got a mass reactive detonator cap that explodes on contact with a target, a diamantine tip for breaching armor, and can be adapted to many, many specialty uses by simply swapping out the payload. This means that for a standard bolt shell, the operation cycle is as follows. 1. The user pulls the trigger. 2. A shell leaves the barrel and after a moment ignites its onboard propellant. 3. The shell picks up speed as it flies to the target. 4. The combination of dense metal core and diamantine tip allow the round to breach the target's armor. 5. The payload, typically a small explosive, detonates. The bolt gun is not a rifle, it's a specialty rocket propelled grenade launcher. There are some exceptions to this though, but the vast majority of bolt weapons operate by firing their 75 caliber or higher round and letting the shell take it from there. And the payload can be anything from the standard explosive round to tranquilizers, psychotoxins, razor filament wires, and psychically impregnated shrapnel. Whether it was because the bolter was such a versatile weapon or that it was made to be versatile because of its importance and the ease at which it could be produced, bolt weapons have some of the widest range of ammunition types in the whole universe. For many, the bolt pistol is a status symbol, a beacon of power so difficult to maintain that they end up being quite rare. For armies that employ servitors and Martian tech adepts, however, the bolt pistol is a sturdy and reliable sidearm that shares ammunition with the larger bolt guns, making them ideal for any army that uses both. Bolt pistol variants come in many flavors, from the standard Astartes pistols and Primaris heavy pistols, to the exotic drum-fed Necromunda types, and even the Votan bolt pistols, as they came from mankind long ago, and so had bolters with them when they spread out into the stars. There are even some canes made for the rich or well-connected in the Imperium that are essentially single-shot bolt pistols, which has to be one of the least elegant hidden weapons I've ever heard of. Honorable mention goes to the Spitfire bolt pistol, which is actually a modified flare launcher that was redesigned to fire rocket-propelled distress flares. Not quite the same as a regular bolt pistol, but you get points for trying. The bolt gun is the original bolt weapon. The gun everyone thinks about whenever 40k is even mentioned. It's the standard firearm of the Marines and the Sisters of Battle. It has more variation than Zinch has schemes. It is the gun that all other bolt weapons are modeled on, and though it is showing its age, it's not even close to losing its throne. The standard bolter, if there is such a thing, is a rifle-like weapon meant to be used in two hands, although marines frequently ignore that part. Like we said earlier, a bolter can fire a huge array of specialty shells and can be used in many different configurations. Subtle variants have been built on planets across the Imperium, but since most of them operate like regular bolters, we'll just cover the really weird ones here. A list of bolters is incomplete without the Stalker Bolter, a bolt gun that has been modified to shoot much more quietly than the booming action one normally expects. The Forge Bolter proves that bolt guns don't even have to be held in any hands, being mounted on a servo arm to leave a Tech Marine's hands free for other work. Even the bolt casters used by the Legio Custodes are just bolters built into the ancient and powerful Guardian Spear and Swords of the Emperor's Bodyguards. 
It would also be good to mention here that bolt guns are often merged with other weapons like plasma and melta guns to create a combi bolter, each of which are rare and valuable weapons only given to the likes of Space Marine leaders and Inquisitors. Honorable mention here goes to the Angelus Bolt Carbine, which should not be confused with the Angelus Bolt Gun, which is used by the Blood Angels Elite Sanguinary Guard. The Angelus Bolt Carbine is actually a black market bolter that is made from scraps and loaded with ammunition that has been stolen from the production lines of the Fane Phycos on the world of gunmetal. The resultant carbines are built to an extremely high quality and sold off to rich clients who want to own their own bolters. The bolt shotgun is the only weapon on our list that is not used by any army in the Imperium. Designed and wielded by only the Leagues of Votan, these shotguns are essentially close range, harder hitting versions of the weapons used by the forces of humanity, and that's not a coincidence. The kin of the Leagues of Votan were once human explorers and miners, so they were equipped with human weaponry that has since diverged in their evolution similarly to the kin themselves. If the Imperium wasn't so stubborn about adapting alien technologies, they'd probably love to use these things. Designed by Belisarius Call himself in order to properly equip his new Primaris Space Marines, the Call Pattern Bolt Rifle is the next chapter in the Bolter story. Built larger to accommodate the bulkier forms of Primaris Warriors, the Bolt Rifle is capable of great stopping power and even though it's still relatively new, the Bolt Rifle already has a bunch of variants. Auto Bolt Rifles for more close range suppression, Stalker Bolt Rifles for Stealth Ops, Heavy Bolt Rifles for maximum intimidation, there's even an actual Primaris Carbine based on the Call Rifle and used by the lighter armored Phobos Warriors. Oh, and let's not forget the Shrike Pattern Bolt Sniper Rifles, allowing Marines to really stretch the maximum range potential of a Bolter. The Bolt Rifles are great weapons, a true successor to the Venerable Bolt Gun. Storm Bolters are the result of someone asking, hey, what would happen if we taped a pair of Bolt Guns together? The answer, incidentally, is that you would get one of the most effective assault weapons in the galaxy. Even from that first thought, the twin-linked bolter, which would become the Storm Bolter, was used primarily by Terminator squads, veteran assault units equipped with almost indestructible tactical dreadnought armor. These marines are in need of fast-firing weapons that can stand up to the abuse from being used by the powerful but clumsy Terminators and the situations they often find themselves in. You see, Terminator armor gives its wearer extra strength and stability, and so the Marine wearing a Terminator suit worries even less about recoil than their light armored comrades. All of these factors come together to make the Storm Bolter capable of firing at the same ranges as a regular bolt gun, but twice as fast, and as a result, the Storm Bolter sees service across the Imperium, both with the warriors of the Astartes and as pintle mounted defense weapons for vehicles. Typically mounted on Primaris Aggressor units, the hefty Boltstorm gauntlets mount a bolt gun onto the housing of a huge power fist. This allows these heavy assault units to have some ability to hose down a target with bolt shells before closing the distance to finish them off with their crackling fists. The Boltstorm gauntlets have technically been around since before the Primaris put them into wider service with notable weapons like the Gauntlets of Ultramar used by Chapter Master Marnius Calgar being a clear example of this sort of weapon. Heavy Bolters are another classic, a large and cumbersome variant of the bolt gun that is used for everything from Space Marine Devastator heavy weapon squads to vehicle mounted defense guns. The Heavy Bolter typically fires a larger caliber version of the standard bolt shell and is such an effective weapon that every Imperial and ex-Imperial army in the galaxy relies on it to suppress and destroy enemy infantry and light vehicles. This has led to many variants, including the Primaris Assault Bolter, which is intended to be used one-handed by Gravis Armored Inceptors, and while Heavy Bolter variants aren't as numerous as the ones for bolt guns, the importance of this infantry portable cannon cannot be overstated. Okay, we are cheating a bit with this one. The Psy Cannon is technically a heavy bolter variant. It's a large, fast-firing bolter. However, the unique nature of the Psy Cannon and its heavily specialized role led us to placing it in its own category. 
As we said, the Psy Cannon is basically just a heavy bolter. However, not only has this weapon been heavily modified to shoot psychically charged shells, it's only used by one army, the Grey Knights. This most secretive chapter of Space Marines operates as the Chamber's militant for the Ordo Malaeus, the arm of the Inquisition most suited for fighting the demonic forces of Chaos. As such, each and every warrior of the Grey Knights is a psyker in their own right and use their powers to fuel a unique array of weaponry, the Psy Cannon being one of those, with each silver-tipped shell charged with negative psychic energy that is guaranteed to give demons and rogue psychers a very bad day, but in the hands of a trained Grey Knight, the Psy Cannon can also infuse their shots with a little bit of extra power. It's kind of disappointing that these weapons are only available to the Grey Knights. I'm sure plenty of chapters would love to deck out their Psychers or Psychic Dreadnoughts with one of these weapons as well. And now we're getting into the variants that only appear on vehicles, and we're starting with weapons that follow in the fine example set by the Storm Bolter. More specifically, if duct taping two bolters together gave us the Storm Bolter, what happens if we just keep adding bolters? Well, that's where you get the Tempest and Hurricane Bolters. These Sponson-mounted weapons are really just arrays of regular bolt guns. The Tempest array is composed of four bolters and can be found on the Reaper variants of the Primaris Gladiator Grav Tanks, while the Hurricane array consists of six bolters and can be mounted on Ironclad Dreadnoughts, Storm Raven gunships, Centurion battlesuits, and the iconic Land Raider Crusader variant. These arrays are used for frontal assaults against massed infantry, taking the incredible stopping power of the bolt gun and multiplying it for obvious results. It might be a simple concept, but the most effective weapons often are. Everything tends to get weirder and more unique as they get larger, and bolters are no exception, especially once they've been mounted to a vehicle. Something about being free from the constraint of needing to be portable leads designers to think up some wild applications for weaponry. The Avenger Bolt Cannon is a fairly standard idea that is often found on Imperial Navy fighter craft. It's a Gatling bolter adding a huge boost to the fire rate of a heavy bolter. Similarly, the Mauler Bolt Cannon is a heavy bolter designed by the Mechanicus for use on their battle automata but instead of going for a faster fire rate, the Mauler goes the other direction and loses some of that ability in favor of loading much larger shells. The Mauler ends up being a fairly effective tank killer as a result. But points for the most unique bolter vehicle weapon probably go to the Scatterbolt Launcher, a design created by the White Scars Space Marines Legion back during the Great Crusade. An underslung design, the Scatterbolt was mounted on the Shamshir jet bikes, and instead of firing directly, the Scatterbolt fires a wall of bolt shells that have been primed to explode before impact, spreading a wall of shrapnel and explosions just ahead of the bike as it charges forwards. Finally, we get to the big boys, the Titan Bolters. Yes, the Bolter is so ubiquitous that it has even been adapted to the towering god engines transforming them from simply infantry killers into city-leveling calamities. The Castigator Bolt Cannon found on smaller Imperial Night Titans, and the Vulcan Mega Bolter found on a range of large titans like the Reaver and Warlord Titans both hurl oversized bolter shells at incredible rates of fire and are capable of blowing meter-wide holes in even the strongest fortifications. Needless to say that any infantry formation that finds itself in sight of one of these truly colossal weapons is very quickly relegated to the past tense. The Bolter is such an iconic weapon. Subtle variations and army patterns have provided us hobbyists with an incredible range of bolt guns to equip our minis with over the years, so if we missed one of your favorite makes, let us know in the comments. We plan on going over more weapon types in later videos as well, so don't be shy about discussing potential topics either. And as usual, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button, or you might find yourself with a knockoff Spitfire Bolt Pistol instead of a real one for the holidays. All the more reason to make sure you never miss more lore.